at it again here working on the Fox and actually we're going to be in the dyno building because we really don't need a lift for what we're doing tonight. Essentially the goal for tonight is just to go ahead and get stuff uh, kind of buttoned up. We need to go ahead and drop the new distributor in, go ahead and get it in time and then put the new uh, or put the spark plugs back in it, run the uh, spark plug wires and of course we'll start running our airlines and stuff along those lines. We can probably put the radiator in and uh, also we're going to go ahead and install the new Holly map sensor because the car is going to be supercharged. No longer going to run the onboard one bar map sensor. Run a couple airlines and just see how far the night takes us. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the ignition stuff and then we'll see how far along we get. We'll talk about these spark plugs here. I'm running a step colder spark plug and uh, these are actually the plugs that came out of the car and I have a new tune built for this car uh, going for supercharged. The reason I'm going to go ahead and just regap these and reuse these is because if my tune is really far off or something along those lines, I don't want to just foul a new set of spark plugs. So at least I can get the car up and running with these, kind of start dialing the fuel in a little bit, and then um, go ahead and change the plugs up before we start doing some wide open throttle hits. So I've got one of these little nifty little uh, spark plug gapping tools. I'm going to start out 32 thousandths because I do have an ignition box we're going to be adding to this car as well. And uh, we'll just gap all these to 32. This one greasy. Mm -hmm. It die electric grease because our spark plug wires you need to have. Yep. Otherwise you're never getting them on. They're gonna be like, who's that felon working on your car? <laughs> it's all right, if it falls, it'll just regap itself. Exactly. Nineteen thousands. <laughs> it's <Fall>. zero. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and set the distributor in. We gotta just move the balancer over a little bit uh, to set it at zero, and then we'll set the pointer on the or the rotor on the distributor at uh, cylinder number one. We might be fighting a little compression. Oh, you know what? It's not. In... We're there. You there? Yep. Perfect. I don't know if. If you've watched the introduction video to this project, you'll notice that in the dyno pull and also on the dyno graph itself, that the car was having ignition cut and breaking up around 5,000 to 5,500 RPM. After some thorough investigation, we noticed that the TFI module on the old MSD distributor in this car was actually cracked and actually not sealing up against the body of the distributor. To remedy this issue, our friends over at Performance Distributors supplied us with one of their billet distributors that is a drop-in upgrade for your 86 through 93 Mustang. So nice features on this distributor it has a Dynamod TFI module pre-installed. The cap and rotor has brass terminal ends on it. And also the shaft already has a steel gear pre-installed from the factory, which is good for most hydraulic roller camshafts on the market. Not tooth off. Just one tooth. That's all they got around these parts. Mm -hmm. Come on, baby. You know you want to slide in there. Come on, get it. Get it, get it. Don't stop. Get it, get it. There we go. I think that's right. Snaps in with a Thorta. Let's do it now. <laughs> cool. Should snap on? Yep. Oh, you owe them for royalties. <laughs> The spark plug wires and the distributor set and everything we're going to move on to installing this new holly three bar map sensor here now with the terminator x system 
It already has this map sensor connector terminated from the factory, which is nice. Only problem is when using this map sensor, the orientation of the slots do not line up with the map sensor. But Holly does include some extra weather packs with your new map sensor. However, instead of going through all that trouble to deep in this and, and wire in the new one or cut it and wire in the new one, we're just gonna cut new slots to match up so that way it just connects right in. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'm just gonna mount this like right here against the firewall. I have that like I have it like that on one of my other cars and it works just fine. So extremely serviceable being at the firewall. Perfect. All right, let's get her mounted on the firewall. Bueno. Yep, very good. Magnifico. Well, let's get a socket on this and drill it in a little ways. What's that? Let's put a socket on that and drill it in a little ways because it's tight. Boom. All right, that's on. Okay, got the new map sensor installed, plugged in. We just took the silicone air line that was going to the onboard uh, one bar map sensor to the Terminator X, cut a piece of that off, running it straight to the intake manifold, go to the new map sensor. All right, there we go, all set. All right, we went ahead and got the crank pulley out from the Bortec kit because what we wanna do, since we have the most room possible right now, is go ahead and snug this over to the harmonic balancer. Uh, you do need a deep well, thin walled socket to be able to fit over the uh, included hardware from Bortec. But it would just be almost impossible or not very easy to, with the radiator and fan assembly, to tighten this pulley down. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'm sure those bolts were a little rusty coming out, so there we go. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, the crank pulley is on and tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and install the water pump pulley as well. This is actually a reproduction 93 Cobra style water pump pulley. We found that these give us the best clearance, especially with the style of the crank pulley from Bortec. So we're just gonna reuse the original hardware and uh, put this on.
Okay, made great progress tonight. Got the pulleys on, got the radiator back in, got the hoses attached. Got the new map sensor in. I went ahead and loaded up the uh, new tune file that I got for it. Um, we actually had the distributor 180 out, so it made a nice uh, healthy backfire on its uh, initial start. But it actually started up and ran, but of course we don't have the alternator on it, so we just wanted to make sure that it would fire. And uh, it, all the lifters bled off pretty much within a few seconds, would you say? Yeah. yeah. So it actually held idle, so we know we're in the right track. So we're going to pick it up again tomorrow and start doing some more things uh, to kind of finish up the engine bay here. Okay, it's the next evening here. I'm just gonna go ahead and just uh, keep going where I left off. I'm gonna go ahead and actually install the catch can and the lines and everything running to these Sanderson valve covers. And if you do hear some buzzing in the background, I do apologize. It's the heater, because it's cold out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get right back to it. Okay, for the catch can system, I actually picked up quite a few pieces from Vibrant Performance. This is actually the uh, hose kit I'm gonna be using. It's their 16318. It's just a uh, 8 a.n. Um, PTFE rated. Uh, flexible hose it's a 10 foot roll so that's a, that'll be enough for both uh, valve covers um, going to the catch can and then for fittings and stuff like that going to the valve covers I just picked up some more vibrant dash 8 AN fittings with push lock ends that way the hose can just slide on it and then for the catch can itself just some hose barbed uh, to uh, 3 8 MPT fittings as well. Of course, that's gonna vary based on your setup. I'm keeping this in the engine bay, uh, right where the battery used to be, right below it. There's a, a bolt that holds the power steering hose. I'm just gonna put my catch can right there. And the, the catch can is just a universal catch can with uh, a breather filter on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack this stuff open and get it installed. Catch can I'm using here is just a universal catch can. It's got a breather filter on top. Uh, it's pretty nice. It is baffled on the inside and at the fittings. I don't know if you can see that very well, but both sides are baffled, so that's pretty nice. So I'm just going to mount this here right along the frame rail. It's got two tangs here that you can put bolts through. And I'm going to put one in for now, then of course um, I'll add another one later. Okay, when they've got the catch can assembled here, and uh, I just went ahead and tightened down the filter, and I tightened up the fittings. I went ahead and put some PTFE sealant around them since they're just uh, MPT fittings. So what I'm gonna do is mount it right down here. And there's a bolt right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Just a 10 millimeter bolt that holds the power steering hose. I'm just gonna sandwich it between there. This is why we test fit first. The holes here on the catch can are not big enough for this bolt to pass through. No big deal, I'll just get a drill and drill that out. Catch can is installed. Now we'll go ahead and start making our lines and running them to there. Go ahead and remove these old vacuum caps off the and fittings there. And, and hand thread these fittings for now. I don't want to tighten them up just yet because I want to check out where my hose, hose orientation is going to go. So I'm just going to get these threads by hand, get them to where. The orientation can still move, but it's not going to bind up. All right. Fittings are loosely installed. Now I'm going to go ahead and unwind this hose here. I'm going to go ahead and attach one end of the hose to the fitting and start moving it around towards the catch can. Cut off the excess, then the way I can use the leftover for the other side. Push locks. 
They're never coming off. You'd have to cut them. There's no way. All right. I'll just snug these up. You don't need to over tighten these. They're ain't in fitting, so just get them snug. You don't want them to come into a cold weld condition where they get bound on there and you have to strip the threads to get them off. You don't want that to happen. It goes. Alright. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Both hoses are on. Everything is out of the way. Just gotta tighten up that fitting. It's all done. it earlier just to show you can't let it run for too long because there's no alternator hooked up but yeah it runs okay that's gonna wrap it up for this evening got a good amount accomplished got the new catch can system in with all the corresponding hoses I went ahead and also tied up a few other loose ends here in the engine bay and actually went ahead and started mocking up the supercharger bracket but I figured I'm going to leave that for the next episode where I can talk to you guys about that in a little bit more detail all the ins and outs of getting one of those Vortec kits onto a Fox body so with all that being said I'm going to call it a night. Nice. stay tuned for the next episode